So it is currently 2 a.m. on what is now the 10th of January, uh, Monday, following the conclusion of the 2021-2022 NFL season, the first 17-game season. And I'm not even taking Adderall, but I still can't sleep, so I kind of wanted to just give my rambling thoughts um, as the Buffalo Bills regular season has concluded, and we now know the full playoff schedule. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to talk about, you know, how my my Buffalo Bills played this season. Did they meet expectations, projections, whatever? I rambled about it, and I've listened to it a few times uh, since I made it back when the schedule dropped in like May, I think, or or April. Um, but I, I know the first thing that that jumps out uh, was, you know, I predicted the Bills would have a deep playoff run uh, and, you know, they would win 13, maybe 14 games. Um, Josh Allen would have another stellar season. I thought the defense, which was decent last year, would be more or less the same. Uh, and I figured that the Bills would get more production out of their running game. I figured Stephon Diggs would pick up right where he left off. Same with Josh Allen. I figured Emmanuel Sanders would be a nice uh, little addition, you know, and I figured while maybe they might not get a ton out of, you know, Dawson Knox or the running backs for that matter, I thought that there would be, you know, an increase and in, in same with the offensive line. Basically, the team was going to be carried by the offense again. You know, you're going to have an, an S tier offense with a B tier uh, defense. However, I think this year, despite winning less games, I think this team is more balanced and probably more frightening than last year's team. Uh, and, you know, obviously last year's team went to the AFC Championship game, won two playoff games, beat Lamar Jackson, ended Philip Rivers' career um, when he was in Indy. Um, and I think, you know, last year, like I said, I think you had, in my opinion, an A slash, honestly, S tier offense with like a B tier defense. I think this year might not have that S tier offense anymore. But I still think you have an A-tier offense and an A-tier defense. Can you say that about any other team in the NFL? I don't think so. You know, you look at the Cowboys, maybe, maybe, maybe they're A-tier offense, A-tier defense. Um, but, I mean, Chiefs, no. Bengals, respectfully, no. I think they have, like, an A-tier offense, C-tier slash B-tier defense. Uh, you know, you look at the Packers, maybe could make it, make it an argument there. But once again, I mean, the Pack Packers are a team that got the one seed. You know, the Bills, they, they got the three seed this year, right? And I think the first thing that, that kind of jumps out to me, especially when looking at this team this year compared to last year, obviously the Bills went 13-3 and last year. This year, high expectations, they went 11-6, and right? So you had, uh, you know, your two and a half games worse, I guess. Um, and, you know, you obviously... You get an extra game this year, right? And so let's say the Bills played the Washington football team last year, just like they did this year. Probably going to go 14-3 and because Washington's just bad, right? Um, and the Bills had a pretty favorable schedule, frankly, I thought, because, um, you know, the only threatening team I anticipated this year, at least out of the NFC South, was the Bucks. Um, and then, you know, the AFC South in itself, I mean, you have literally two gimmies against the Jags and the Texans. Once again, this is what I was anticipating. Um, and you do have two good teams in the Titans and Colts, but you lucked out against the um, Washington football team. And, uh, you know, also your division is full of really young, inexperienced, mediocre teams going into the season. You know, Patriots... Jets, Dolphins, you have by far and not even close. You don't even have anybody within two or three tiers of your, your current quarterback. So, I mean, you know, I figured the Bills would win 12 or 13 games. I figured they would win their division by week 16. Uh, and that if any team came within two games of winning the division, I would be pretty surprised, not only by their performance, but also the Bills' performance. And that is part of the course, right? Because the Bills didn't actually clinch the AFC East until today when the Dolphins beat the Patriots, dropping the Patriots' record to 10-7. and 7. Uh, And, you know, the Bills obviously took care of business against the Jets because it's the Jets, right? Let's be real. Uh, and they end up finishing 11-6. and 6. I figured they would win the division. I kind of figured that all year round. But, you know, I kind of looked at the season 
quarter by quarter or four games by four games uh, and then five games towards the end broke it down into four parts uh going in and i think that that's usually a good way to look at things that's kind of how i want to look at the season this year but i do want to give credit to the uh afc east because um you know I, i figured patriots maybe win nine games dolphins maybe win eight eight or nine games and the jets you know not win more than five and that's actually what happened but you know, I was presently surprised by how well the Patriots played. Um, obviously, they won 10, 10 games with a rookie quarterback, um, and they had some big wins too over some pretty good teams. Uh, you know, they beat the Titans, they beat the Chargers, destroy the Browns, they beat the Bills. They had themselves a, a quite nice season, um, and then the Dolphins as well. Um, you know, they started out one and seven, which was like wow. Um, and they had an insanely easy schedule, frankly, um, to be fair, but, uh, you know, they, they ended up finishing nine and eight. So they went eight and one in their last nine games. I mean, I respect it and they ended up finishing around what I figured they would. Um, but I tipped my cap, um, jets were what four and 13. They're terrible. They did have a few nice wins in there. So kudos to them they played a couple close games, but you know, Mike white, blah, 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 the bills, you know, they beat the shit out of the jets. I mean, today, they held them to 55 total yards of offense or something like that. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so Bills didn't quite come up with the 13-4 and four, um, preseason projection that I had. You know, I had them basically going 4-1, 4-1, and one, four and one, or no, sorry, 3-1, and 3-1, and 3-1, and 4-1. And I mean, just breaking up the season, right? Um, and I mean, if you look... If you break it up, the first four games, Pittsburgh at Miami, home with Washington, Houston, they went three and one, you know, and if you told me that they were going to lose to the Steelers, that was probably the most likely of those first four teams Um, because, you know, Miami, Josh Allen at Miami, I mean, he historically has great success against them. Uh, and then Washington and Houston, Washington is literally the definition of mediocre. And then Houston was a dumpster fire. Um, so it didn't surprise me, uh, without Deshaun Watson, that is, uh, and just in general at this point. Um, but you know, the, shout out to them. They had a couple, uh, nice games this year, beat the Titans. That's nice. Titans got the one seat. I can't believe that. Um, but they went four and one in that stretch, right? And then you look at their next four game stretch at Kansas city at Tennessee versus Miami and versus Jacksonville, they went two and two in that stretch, which is, I think, what I had anticipated because you had Kansas City and uh, Tennessee uh, on the road, right? Um, And then you had Miami and Jacksonville. And I was like, you know, Miami could be a tough game. It's divisional opponent. And then you got two of the better teams in the AFC. And what do you know? There's the two top seeds in the AFC. And, you know, the fact that they were able to beat the Chiefs instead of the Titans, that was the best case. I mean, I really wanted to get that first win over Patrick Mahomes just to kind of be like, okay, this is an actual rivalry. Because what now? That's your one and two historically against Patrick Mahomes. Because if you fall to 0 and 3, I mean, man, it's hard to come back from that, you know? Um, so they finished 2 and 2 there. And then their next four stretch. Uh, at New York, home to Indy, at New Orleans, home to the Patriots. I figured they would go three and one, maybe even four and zero. Oh. They ended up going two and two. And there was a stretch here during the middling part of the season, um, basically from like the forty percent through like the sixty percent part of the season, I, I guess, um, where they just would win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And in particular, great game, bad game, great game, bad game. And that's exactly what happened. They had a terrible game to Jacksonville, great game to the the Jets. Terrible game to Indy at home. They just got embarrassed. And then a great game against New Orleans, right? Terrible game against the Patriots. Frankly, a pretty damn good game against Tampa, despite losing in overtime. Um, And so, you know, they were sitting at seven and six, right? And then that last five game stretch, you know, I said, all right, they're probably going to go four and one. And that's exactly what happened. So, I mean, they, they played... They were relatively consistent, you know. They didn't uh, string off a a big losing streak, um, nor did they pull off a a big winning streak. They never won more than four games in a row. Um, However, you know, once um, Thanksgiving happened, they won uh, six of their last eight, 
you know, they lost to New England and Tampa, and those were two crushing games to lose. But they took care of business against the Panthers. They took care of business against the Falcons, the Jets, really bad teams. Um, And, you know, that was something that I was really happy about last year because, especially this season, uh, even by, like, the midseason point, every team had lost to an opponent that was worse than them, right? Um, Except for, like, the Chiefs, now that I think about it. But, like, the Bucks had lost to the football team. Titans had lost to the Jets, right? The Patriots had lost to the Dolphins. Uh, The Packers had lost to the Saints. Um, You know, the Rams had lost to... Who they lose to? They lose to to a fucking bum team. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but the point is, a, a lot of teams had been caught slipping. There have been a lot of upsets, and I mean, par for the course. The Colts ended up losing to the Jags this week. Um, very unpredictable, right? And last year, the Bills were were so consistent on being able to beat teams that were lesser than them, save for the Hail Murray. Um, and so this year. <sighs> I'll talk about their losses. (laughs) They took care of business. When when they won games, this this is the biggest thing. The biggest takeaway from the Bills, when you look at their 11-6 record and you look at the games they won and they lost, they stick out like a sore thumb. And it's kind of amazing. There's only one really, really, really bad all-around game for the Bills all season long. And that was the home game against the Colts and it was brutal right that was just a bad game Jonathan Taylor had their number it was rainy Josh Allen tried his best but he just couldn't do it they couldn't run the ball and they couldn't stop the run and they just kept going they they, the lead just kept getting built upon by the Colts and there was just nothing the Bills could do and it was just like one of those situations where literally I think they got dominated on every phase of the ball their defense got killed their offense couldn't do anything. And I'm pretty sure there was there might have been a blocked field goal or a blocked punt. Um, and maybe like a missed field goal or two. Like it was bad. It was bad. Um, but other than that, every game they won, they won by at least two scores. And every game they lost was within one score. That's That's got to be like... Obviously, there's that one caveat because there's that one game and you can't like stat check and be like, except for one game. But like, I wonder how often that's happened where a team throughout the regular season beat down every opponent and just narrowly lost to every team, right? Because the Bills were, were what, 0-5 in one score games, which is, I mean, generally that's bad, right? Because every team... Every team at some point in the season is going to get their bell rung and is going to, you know, for lack of a better term, get the brakes beat off them. It's just kind of, it's just what happens. You know, you look at every good team this year, every team has had a game where they just were bad. Look at, look at both of the top seeds, for example. Tennessee, they got destroyed by the Texans. They got destroyed by the Patriots. You look at the Packers, they got destroyed by the Saints. I mean, it just happens. Bills, though, they did have that game against the Colts. But otherwise, I mean, you know, you want to look at week one against the Steelers. That was a really rough game. It was really sloppy. Um, But, I mean, it was a blocked punt for a touchdown. That was the difference. Only lost by seven points. And the Steelers actually made the playoffs, so it doesn't look as bad of a loss as we thought, Um, especially as the season kind of progressed because I was like, man, these the Steelers are not very good. And I still don't think the Steelers are very good, but somehow they made the fucking playoffs. They're going to get murdered by the Chiefs. Um, but then, you know, you look at the Titans game, Josh Allen slips on a fourth and, uh, fourth and goal or fourth and inches QB sneak inside the, the, the five yard line with like 20 seconds left. If they, you know, if he picks it up for all intents and purposes, they win, right? The odds of winning is like 95%. Uh, and you know, the Jacksonville game, oh my God, that, that was the worst game of the year for sure. Um, but I mean, they still only lost by three points. You know, it's not like they they lost they lost nine to six. It's not like they lost twenty nine to six. Um, and then the Patriots game, obviously the first one in the blizzard, uh, you know, only lost by four points. And that one was just mm, it was rough, but 
close game, had the chance to win it at the end. Uh, and then the Tampa Bay game was probably the best, most entertaining game all year. And they lost in overtime, uh, you know, and that Stefan Diggs absolutely should have been a penalty. Uh, and similarly to the Titans, if, you know, and obviously one was per refs, one was by the Bills own doing, unfortunately. But, you know, if Josh Allen doesn't get stuffed on that fourth and goal or in that fourth and one, they probably beat the Titans. And if they call that penalty um, on Carlton Davis undressing Stefan Diggs, the Bills win that game, too. But, you know, it's a give and take. It is what it is. The Bills got the ball first in overtime um, and they went three and out. And so they lost to Tom Brady, which is part of the course that that's what the bills do they they can't beat tom brady and i knew that i knew that going into the season that was like my one guarantee was that they're going to lose to the bucks they could have went 16 and 1 and lost to the bucks and i would have been like saw it coming but it was a great game that was a great game uh fantastic so much fun watching never the most entertaining regular season bills game i've ever watched straight up at the bills bar i go to it was electric i mean the atmosphere was unbelievable but yeah, I think if I were to look back, you know, my, my biggest takeaway um, from this season is, you know, this team was sometimes hot. When they were hot, they were really hot. When they were cold, they weren't ice cold, but they were like kind of not lukewarm, but like 45, 50 degrees, you know, because I mean... Outside of that Colts game, the defense, they give up nine points to the Jags, 14 points to the Patriots, uh, 16 points to the Steelers because there was the, you know, the touchdown, those special teams, you know, Tampa, that was just a good game all around, you know, kind of a bang, bang play. Uh, or play uh, kind of a bang bang performance um so i mean the the titans game it was a lot of derrick henry right and i mean derrick henry ran ramp shot on everybody so i can't really fault them there but you know when they won their games though i mean you, you're you're looking at within a three game stretch they won 35 nothing 43 21 40 to nothing i mean <laughs> they won by scores of 31 to 6, 45 to 17, 40 to nothing, 35 to nothing, 38 to 20, 43 to 21. I mean, and I mean, their last four games, they won by at least 12 points. They won 31 to 14 over Carolina, 33 21 over New England, 29 15 over Atlanta, 27 10 over the Jets. I mean, they, they, that, that's one thing I, I, I can say that I, I'm kind of, it's kind of nice because a lot of the times when there's one score games, you can, you know, if, if sin butts, but I mean, what, what if is going to come into play for a game when you win it by over two touchdowns? Like, I mean, you, you can't say, you can't go back to, I don't know, the Carolina game and say, this play is the reason why they won and they got lucky. No, every game they won, they won it outright. And it was undisputed dub, which I am a fan of. Um, can't say that for the losses though, you know, because they were two plays away, um, in the Tennessee and the Tampa games respectively. Um, and I mean, you look at the new England game and you look at the Jacksonville game, the offense just couldn't do the offense was just bad. You know, I can't explain the Jacksonville game. That is just the one, like if I look at this team and how it performed and it's makeup, that game just doesn't. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, it's, just, it's really an anomaly. But, I mean, you know, I, I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> after they lost the Jags, I no longer had trust in this team, you know, because for the longest time they had done a really good job of beating up on inferior teams. You know, since honestly, since like 2019, because I mean, that's kind of how they won, made the playoffs was that they beat up on teams that, you know, weren't playoff contenders. Um, but, you know, they were able to right the ship. They did lose, uh, you know, what I want to say all but one game they lost to were to playoff teams. So and they had an easy schedule. So I know that that's something a lot of people were kind of housing them about. But I mean, you know, 
they didn't play that many playoff teams, I guess. Um, but, you know, they did beat the Patriots. They did beat the Chiefs. Um, and just, I mean, every, nobody else made the playoffs. I mean, New Orleans was a game away from making the playoffs. They got eliminated today. Um, but I don't know. Um, but the, the one thing I will say um, that I'm really – that jumped out outside of, you know, the one-score thing um, and how there was none in their wins and there were a ton last year, the defense was amazing. I mean, the the Bills' point differential is – I'm pretty sure it's number one in the league. Um, and like point differential, you can kind of take it for what it is, you know. Um, it's not the end all. But, I mean, they outscored their opponents by almost 200 points. They outscored them by 194. Like, are you are you kidding me? They were plus 194 in point differential. That is the only team that comes close is Dallas, which is plus 172, right? But, I mean, you look at some of the other big teams in the NFL. The Chiefs were plus 116. The Titans were only plus 65, which is crazy that they're the one seed. Um, you know, the Bucks were plus 158. The Packers were only plus 79. Point differential, though, it's kind of about who you play. You know, the Bills got to play the three worst teams in the NFL. We don't want to talk about what happened in one of those games. But, you know, they got two against the Jets, one against the Texans, one against the Jags. So, I mean, they were able to really, you know, pile it on, especially against the Dolphins too early on when they were really struggling. But, I mean, still, that's that's pretty amazing. And, you know, they had, you know, the by far the best defense um, points allowed-wise. Um, well, I guess New England was pretty close. But, I mean, they only allowed 289 points. And they scored, uh, I believe, did they score the most points in the league? Looks like, okay, it looks like they had the third highest offense for points scored um, and the highest defense, uh, the, the lowest points allowed in defense. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, if you tell me that there is a team and that's, that's where they stood at and they have a quarterback like Josh Allen, who is a top five quarterback, I mean, you can't tell me, especially if this top five quarterback has won playoff games in the past, you can't tell me that they're not, you know, a top Super Bowl candidate for their conference and just in general, you know, it's amazing. And so, you know, I know they, they didn't perform as well in the regular season this year, statistically, win and loss wise, um, but the defense is much better this year than it was last year. Offense, not quite as good, but I will take that downgrade. And we saw a massive increase and improvement from the running game the past few games. Say what you want about the opponents. It's fine. I get it. Whatever. But Devin Singletary looks like the guy, right? I don't know if he is an every down back, but he definitely has, you know, been the one to stand out. And he is the the superior running back of the ones that are in the room between Breda, between Moss and Singletary. He is head and shoulders above the other two guys. Straight up. You know, no diss to them, but... Uh, and also, you know, with Josh Allen's running ability, I mean... Phew. But, um, you know, looking at some of the kind of individual standings or um, stats, I guess you could say, uh, you know, Josh Allen had a, you know... Not quite as good of a year as he had last year, but, you know, he still threw for over 4,400 yards. He had 36 passing touchdowns, um, a 92 passer rating, which, you know, the passer rating, I don't know how to feel about that because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Tua Tungavailoa's passer rating was like considerably, okay, well, his passer rating is like damn near the same as Josh Allen's. And I mean, pfft. Tua had like 15 touchdowns to 10 picks on the season. So, like, fuck out of here with that. Um, but, I mean, it does have a lot to do with completion percentage and turnovers. And Josh Allen, you know, he threw 15 interceptions. Um, you know, he was 37 to 10 last year, 36 to 15 this year. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a decent drop there. You know, he, he turned the ball over a little bit more, and he was not quite as crisp as he was this past um, or last season in 2020. Um, and, you know, you can – 
you can say whatever you can try and point to this or that i mean i, I kind of look all across the board i think everything was more or less the same i think he had just as good of a running game just as good of a you know targets to throw to and you know the o-line wasn't quite as good as it was last year pass protection but I mean, he still played at an A tier level. You know, he's still probably a top five MVP candidate because <laughs> you look at what he did passing 4,400 yards, 36 touchdowns, and then you turn around and you look at what he did running the ball. Excuse me? Throw in six more touchdowns because he had 45 total touchdowns last year, 42 this year, six rushing, 36 passing. Uh, not to mention, he added 760 yards. He had 76 yards, 760 yards rushing. Are you kidding me? Like that's that's insanity. That's that's crazy. That is some Lamar Jackson type stuff. You know, like that's that's more than like Russell Wilson. Like he he is with it's him, Lamar, and Kyler right now, which is crazy, crazy. Um, but you know, I, I I'm a big fan of Devin Singletary. I think. You know, it's hard to pound him up the middle time after time. But, I mean, when he only goes eight rushes for 20 yards, I know that doesn't look good. But you just got to get him his touches. You just got to get that motherfucker involved because he makes plays. He makes people miss. And, I mean, once again, he had 4.6 yards per carry. You know, he had almost uh, just under 900 yards rushing on the season. You know, seven touchdowns. I mean, time in and time out, I would look at – the stat line and he would I mean he'd only have 12 rushes but he'd have 60 70 yards and it's just like damn i wish they would give him the ball more you know but he had a good season zach moss was trash um straight up do not like him at all um you know he had four rushing touchdowns but 3.6 yards per carry which isn't as bad as it might as you might think um because four is kind of the 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 mendoza line for me at least with running backs and yards per carry but moss is bad i'm done with him uh, Stefan Diggs, obviously last year, he was a first team all pro led the league in catches and yards. Um, not quite as good of a season as he had last year, although he still had over a hundred yard or over a hundred catches. Uh, he had 1200 yards, which is pretty good. 10 touchdowns. Um, you know, he was still, in my opinion, a bona fide number one wide receiver. Um, and I think he's still honestly, he wasn't quite as explosive. He wasn't having like games of like, I think he only had like three games over a hundred yards, but you still look and see that he was consistently getting six, seven balls for 60, 70, 80, 90 yards week in and week out. I, I can't remember if there was a game where he had less than like 40 yards receiving, which 40 yards receiving is not a lot, but you know, there wasn't, it wasn't times where he only got one catch for 10 yards or he just was catchless. He was always in the offense. And so, yeah, 100 catches, 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. It's a good season. It's not, you know, an all-pro season, but it's still he still had a good year. Um, Beasley, not quite as good as he was last year either. Um, only had one touchdown, which is kind of amazing. But, you know, he was still a good um, slot receiver, um, I thought, all things considered. Um, he had 82 catches, 700 yards, only had one touchdown. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders didn't play – all 17 games, but, you know, once again, I had kind of assumed that he would production-wise be similar to, you know, a John Brown where he'd have six, 700 yards, handful of touchdowns, and that's more or less what he probably would have had had he played the whole season, um, but he finished with a little over 600 yards. I think the big, the big leap that was taken this year, the biggest leap of all the players was Dawson Knox. Um, he had himself a fantastic season. Nine touchdowns, uh, 600 yards in 15 games, 71 catches. He definitely was more consistent than he was last year, um, and honestly, his rookie year. Because his, his big thing is he's he's athletic enough, and he has flashes of being like a bona fide tight end, like a beast. Because everybody knows he is athletic enough. You know, he's hard to guard. But his hands have been a big issue. And while he had his fair amount of drops, a little bit, he definitely improved a lot. And, you know, potentially next season we could see his coming out party. Because honestly, you know, at certain parts of the season, a lot of people were looking at Dawson Knox and be like, this guy is the next best tight end in the league. Straight up. Like that Kansas City game where you have two touchdowns, like over 100 yards. I mean, he was balling. Big balling. 
right? And so he was probably the biggest, um, you know, rising player. Um, and then, you know, Gabriel Davis, for whatever reason, for a, a vast majority of the season, he just wasn't involved in the game plan. You know, it's not like he was hurt. I mean, he played 16 to 17 games, but, you know, he only had 550 yards and six touchdowns, um, but he only got, you know, 63 targets. I mean, he was fifth in targets on the team, which is like, wow, that's crazy. You know, um, I love Gabriel Davis. I think he's got some great hands. Um, I think he's a great deep threat. I think he's incredibly crafty and smart. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, they just got off of him. And, you know, there were some games where he really stepped the fuck up, especially, you know, these last couple games of the season. Um, you know, he really proved that like, hey, you know, I was a pretty good rookie, showed some promise and I was ready to break out. Y'all just didn't want to give me the, uh, you know, the, the, the chance. And, you know, that's, that's kind of too bad. Um, but yeah, I had a, a pretty good season. A player that, you know, I, I really was a big, a big fan of and kind of wish that they would get a little bit more involved was Isaiah McKenzie. Um, and, you know, he got his touches, whether it was, <clears throat> you know, in the form of a brush or, you know, um, punt returning or, you know, in the receiving game sparingly. Um, but obviously he had that huge game against the Patriots where he was just unbelievable. Um, and, you know, other than that, though, he didn't really get too involved. I wish that we'd see a little bit more of him. Um, but, yeah, the offense as a whole I think was pretty good. Um, biggest – I guess I'll talk about, like, the biggest disappointments – Biggest disappointments, I would say, this year was probably Zach Moss. Um, and the biggest surprise was Dawson Knox. Um, none of them were major. It's not like Zach Moss was a great player that was all, uh, was suddenly terrible. And it's not like Dawson Knox was a terrible player that was suddenly amazing. But, you know, I thought each of them were kind of okay and showed flashes. One of them took a step back. One of them took a step forward. That's kind of where I'm at now. Um, but obviously the defense, man, this is the one that we were all, you know, kind of had our eyes on and what we were, you know, looking forward to based on, uh, you know, how the season ended last year and what they did in the draft with Boogie Basham and um, Gregory Rousseau. Um, and, you know, the leading sacker on the team was Mario Addison with seven. And outside of him, nobody eclipsed more than four sacks, which is kind of, kind of sad, but you know, the team was still able to consistently get a decent amount of pressure. Um, and, you know, while Rousseau had his moments, he wasn't amazing. You know, he, he's probably not going to show up on the all-rookie team or certainly not going to be a Pro Bowl or anything like that. But he had his moments. I mean, you know, early on in the season, him and Epinesa were fantastic. Um, and they, you know, they definitely cooled off. Um, and you know, they, you know, they only combined for what six sacks. Um, but you know, obviously Russo had that huge game against the chiefs with the interception and I think the sack, uh, or, or two sacks maybe. Um, but you know, up and down up front, Jerry Hughes was again, good against the run. Addison was probably your most consistent, um, player when it comes to getting after the passer. Uh, but Ed Oliver, honestly, if I were to look at uh, up front, and say who was the best player on our defensive line. I got to say Ed Oliver cuz nobody was amazing, but Ed Oliver was consistent in the run game. He made his fair share of dumbass plays. He's kind of a, he's kind of a goofy, not the smartest mischievous guy in the world. I mean, he got a fucking DUI. I mean, pff. um but you know, it's fine as long as he is not operating a vehicle or one of his horses while he's under the influence uh, and or, you know, being dumb at the end of the plays and getting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. <clears throat> Jerry Hughes, he's where, probably where he learned that from. Um, he's great. I love his motor. And, you know, while he isn't living up to a top 10 pick potentially, I think, you know, next year we, he could be in for, for a really big season. And I do like him on the team. Um, but I think... You know, looking at Matt Milano, he was great again this year. Tremaine Edmonds, he's a good player, you know. 
I, I don't care what anybody says. He's lived up to his draft position. He's a pro bowl. He's been a pro bowler several times. He's a good player. He's just got so much potential with that frame and the, and the way he flashes and just how fast he's able to move and his size, like it, it just drives you crazy, right? Like you think that this dude should be the best linebacker in the league. And sometimes he's up there and then other times he's just bad. Like so sometimes he's just bad. Um, but I think, you know, the, the big thing this year uh, was the back end. You know, the Bills' pass defense was unbelievable. Um, something insane, like eight touchdowns to 20 interceptions. I, I don't actually have the stat. Um, but they only allowed like seven or eight passing touchdowns all season long. Um, three of them came to Tom Brady, so three of them in one game. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> the pass defense was ridiculous. Now, once again... I get it. The quarterbacks, you played Davis Mills, you played Mike White, you know, you paid um, Tua, you played Jacoby Brissett, you played a lot of B tier quarterbacks, you know, you did play Patrick Mahomes, you did play Tom Brady, but I mean, outside of those two, Tannehill and Carson Wentz, I mean, really, <laughs> like Matt Ryan at this point, like, okay, I get it. They didn't play a lot of great quarterbacks, but still, I mean, there was one quarterback that threw for 300 yards on him. Two quarterbacks threw for more than for for double or for more than one touchdown in the game. Taylor Heineke and fucking Tom Brady. Those are the only two quarterbacks um, that threw more than one touchdown against the Bills. Crazy, crazy. Um, Micah High was fantastic. Jordan Poyer was fantastic. I mean, these guys have been. This is their fifth season in a row of being one of the best safety tandems in the NFL. That's I respect that. And, you know, they're, they're both in their late – they might be in their age 29 or 30 seasons at this point. Um, but they're playing as good as they've ever played, I mean, straight up. Uh, and, then you know, obviously, uh, Tredavious White went down with the torn ACL in the Patriots game, I believe, or maybe the Saints game, um, which was a big, a big loss, a big loss. But, you know, I think the rest of the team has played well enough to where, you know, missing your number one corner – isn't hindering the defense in the way it might to another team, uh, you know, if they were to lose their number one corner. The defense still plays really well. Levi Wallace has been solid. Dane Jackson has been decent. Um, and Teron Johnson, I still love him as a nickelback. Um, and just in general, the defense stepped up and has been fantastic. I mean, they're number one in the league in virtually every statistic, um, you know, maybe outside of like quarterback sacks. Um, but I mean, they don't have a TJ Watt or an Aaron Donald or just, you know, a dominant pass rusher. So it doesn't surprise me that they're not tops in the sacks, but their defenses are all better than the Steelers and they're better than the Rams and the Bears and all those big defenses with the big name pass rushers. But yeah, um, all in all though, I think the Bills had a great season. Um, the offensive line, the big issues, my biggest, I want to talk about the three biggest strengths and the three biggest issues that I had with the bills. So the first biggest issue, the first glaring issue, just to kind of wrap it all up was their inability to win one score games. There were way too many games. And I mean, they only lost six, but there were several games in which Josh Allen had the ball with the ability to go down the field and score a touchdown slash kick a field goal to tie or win the game. Tampa, Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, Tennessee couldn't get it done. Couldn't get it done. Couldn't make a statement. Couldn't fulfill those f franchise quarterback moments. Obviously, there are caveats in there, but I mean, come on, you needed you just needed three points to go down the field against Jacksonville. You know, there was four games in which. The other team got the ball back and just took knees. That sucks. That can't happen. You know, you can't be an elite team and do that. You know? Ah, not good. Second biggest issue. Red zone offense. Man, the red zone offense was bad. And it, it just does not make sense to me how you can have a team with the weapons it has on the outside, but mainly the quarterback and still be forced to kick so many goddamn field goals, you know? And it, it didn't bite them in the ass in the games they won, but I mean, if I remember correctly, 
you know, against the Titans, I think they went down the field like twice and kicked two short field goals. Uh, you know, against the Patriots, they, they had to kick field goals. I mean, there, there were some legitimate games that really fucked them up because they just could not score in the red zone. The Patriots blizzard game sticks out like a fucking eyesore. Sore thumb, you know. And time in and time out, if you had to pinpoint an issue with the offense or the defense, that was definitely the biggest one, is that in the red zone, their play calling was just bad. You know, you had against the... Uh, against the Patriots, what, third and 15, Josh runs down and gets a penalty or whatever, and it's like fourth and forever. Same against the the Jags. Like, you just have these fourth and forevers, and you just can't pick them up, you know? The Bills are normally pretty good under, you know, this this improved Josh Allen at picking up these third and longs and these fourth and longs. But, I mean, God, dude, like, picking up third and nine or third and 12 is much different than picking up third and 18 and third and 20 and fourth and 18. Like, come on, man. So that was a big one. Um, and then I would say a, a pretty big issue um, that I had this season and noticed this season was the ability t- for the Bills to stop the running game. In particular, against really good running backs. Um, And, you know, obviously the first ones that come to mind, the two best running backs in the league, Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry, they ran all over the Bills, and it was bad, right? You know it's bad when both of the quarterbacks in those games, uh, Tannehill and Wentz, combined for like 200 yards passing and like one touchdown, and you still got beaten, you know, badly. Um, and, and that was just frustrating. And, and Damian Harris as well, both games against the Patriots, they could not stop that man. You know, it wasn't a huge issue because, you know, there were a fair few teams in which, you know, the Bills maybe would have been kind of intimidated by the running game and it wasn't a real issue. You know, Najee Harris, I don't, you know, he didn't really do a whole lot. Antonio Gibson didn't really, you know, do anything. You know, Miles Gaskin and the Dolphins, didn't really do anything uh you know a team like the panthers although christian mccaffrey wasn't playing you know but the big running backs they did play they had issues you know and damian harris i mean i think in like i think he only played half of the first game because he got hurt but i mean he must have run for like 300 yards or something in the two games to Bills, but they could not stop him. They could not stop him. Um, But yeah, so those are like my three biggest gripes. Three biggest strengths for this team. I would say their biggest strength was just how well they were able to play against the pass. Um, I mean, they, I get bad quarterback, but still, I mean, they were absolutely unstoppable. Um, when it comes to getting after the passer, forcing turnovers on, you know, not elite and at times even elite quarterbacks, um, you know, Mike White, Davis Mills, all of those, you know, rookie quarterbacks, Zach, uh, Zach Wilson, was a Zach Taylor, Trevor Lawrence, even none of them had any success. Mac Jones, I mean, he looked terrible in the second game. Right. There was not a performance by somebody that wasn't named Tom Brady that was exceptional or even good against this Bills this Bills defense. And so that's something you can fucking hang your hat on. All right. Straight up. Um and I think a second big strength was, you know, their ability to to beat up on teams and and really win decisively in, in a lot of their games. Um, because I think there is something to be said about a team that will just beat the brakes off of you and, you know, leave no stone untouched, leave no doubts about, you know, Kansas City Chiefs, Buffalo Bills, oh, well, well, if this happened, the Bills would have No, they won by 18 points, you know. Fuck out of here. They dropped 40 points several times. Um, and I would say the third biggest strength is Josh Allen. <laughs> you know, he was he he carried the team at times during the season. He is the offense. Offense runs through him. He's amazing. Um, you know, in, in games where he might not be throwing the ball the best, you know, he'll turn around and he'll run for 100 yards and two touchdowns like he did against the Falcons. He'll make some insane throws. I get it. He'll miss some here and there. It is what it is. It's Buffalo. The weather's not great. He's not perfect. You know, he's a little rough around the edges at times. But, I mean, fuck, that touchdown he threw against the Jets today – 
Whoo to digs. Oh my God. Absolutely insane. And he made his fair share of, of amazing throws and he had some fantastic games this season. Uh, you know, obviously the, the one against the chiefs, Mwah. absolute fucking masterpiece one against the Patriots in uh, the second game. Mwah. Absolute fucking masterpiece. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, you want to look at the, the games against the uh, Jets. Amazing. I mean, he played really well. You know, he, he was our shining star. He did turn the ball over a decent amount of times. That's fair. That's true. More than last year. But I still think he is an amazing quarterback and he's a great asset and he's an absolutely a strength, right? And those two previous strengths matched with what we have, like those three strengths that we have. There's no reason I think this team is not a Super Bowl team. Um, and so I think the last two things I want to go over um, is I want to pick out my favorite game and my least favorite game throughout this entire season. So I'm going to say my favorite game. And this one, I'm actually going to say two. Um, my first favorite game was the Kansas City Chief game. The Bills were uh, three and one going into that game, um, and the Chiefs were they were struggling a little bit, but I mean they were still that dominant team. They were still, you know, well, they still had Patrick Mahomes, Terry Kill, and Travis Kelsey, you know, and this was a highly anticipated matchup. It was on Sunday Night Football, and the Bills were zero and two against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs before with Josh Allen, and he went out there and he had himself a fantastic game. And the Bills defense did as well. It was a fantastic all-around effort. And, you know, they had a pick six in there. I think Josh Allen had four total touchdowns. I mean, it was just, it was obliteration, frankly, uh, of the Chiefs. And it was just so fun to watch. Um, and, you know, got the monkey off the back. Because once you get that first win, once, once something happens that you're not expecting or that you're nervous about for the first time, it opens the door and it makes you not as nervous for that thing to come to fruition in the future, right? So if it took us, you know, if we were 0 5 against the Chiefs, I'm wondering, are we ever going to beat this team? But, you know, now that we've actually won a game, if we play them in the playoffs, okay, we did it once. I think we can do it again, right? It's possible. Um, and so, yeah, that was probably my favorite game. I think my second favorite game was against the Patriots um, to essentially clinch the division just because so many people were trying to tell me that Mac Jones and this fucking cookie cutter ass basic passing attack. Uh, was was somehow going to be able to beat the Bills and win the division, uh, you know, in a non-Blizzard game. Fuck off with that shit. Um, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> the Bills have much better of an offense. The Patriots, I respect the hell of what they did this year. They surpassed my expectations, you know, substantially, and I respect them for that. But there's no way in hell little rookie dink and dunk Mac Jones is going to throw for more than 200 yards and, and more than one touchdown at all this season. And they play each other. And that's one thing I'm going to talk about. They play each other in the playoffs. And no, I'm like, you're going to have to win with Damian Harris and Ramon J. Stevenson because he's not fucking doing it. And it was just so satisfying in New England. You know, once again, as they did with everybody, they, they roughed them up. They didn't punt a single fucking time. You know, they had some drops on fourth down. They had some red zone issues. <sighs> Um, but I mean, they were, they were a dropped fourth down, uh, touchdown catch away from, I mean, they would have won that game. What 40 to 20, I mean, 40 to 22. I mean, they would have really, really put a cherry on top. Um, and Josh Allen was amazing. He had what three or four touchdowns, a bunch of rushing yards, a bunch of passing yards. I mean, he was amazing. He was amazing. Um, and I think a, a, a honorable mention to the Bucks game, but that was purely because the energy at the place I was watching it at and just the hype of that game was amazing. Ultimately, it was disappointing as hell, but I just want to throw that in there. But, um, you know, the worst game, you know, obviously the Colts one jumps out to mind because that was just a game that got dominated, but I'm going to go with the, the, the Jags game um, just because the Jags were a horrible team. They had gotten the shit kicked out of them by everybody beforehand and after as well. Um, and this was a big game for the Bills because, I mean, had they won this, they maybe had a chance of getting a one, uh, getting the one seed. I guess not because the Titans would have had the tiebreaker. But still, I mean, it was a huge game for them, um, you know, at that point in the season. Uh, and it was just a game you had to have. There was no touchdowns scored in the whole thing. The defense did their best, but the offense was just ass. I mean, the Patriots game as well, the first Patriots game, they were both terrible. Um, but I think the Jags one, 
I give it the slight edge of the the shit cake. I get, that takes the shit cake, um, just because I remember with uh, one of my really good friends, I took him. He's not a football fan. I took him to the Bills bar because that place gets jumping. It gets hype. I mean, it was great today against the Bucks. It was amazing. Um, and with the intention of okay, they're playing the Jags. It's gonna be a beatdown. Every time they score a touchdown, the place goes nuts, and they have like you know a bunch of loud music and everybody's clapping. And not only did they not score any touchdowns, they fucking lost. And I was trying to, like, break it down to him how the Jags were, like, the worst team in the NFL. Like, they were just awful. And it held up. Uh, They got the number one overall pick. And the Bills somehow fucking lost to these jokers. I don't know how. Um, But, yeah, that was definitely the the worst game um, of the season, in my opinion. With the Patriots probably being a second, not close, but there. And then probably a third to the Colts game. Um, those three were pretty fucking bad, but yeah, um, I think the season was pretty, was pretty good. Uh, I kind of want to do a separate, uh, ramble for the playoffs, but I think the bills should take care of business against the Patriots. Um, they're going to play at home. The only caveat, honestly, with the Patriots and with this matchup is something that happened the first time they played, you know, uh, inclement weather, um, because, Damian Harris is the Bills kryptonite. I mean, he looked fantastic when they played a couple weeks ago. Obviously, he had that big touchdown the first time they played. Um, you know, if if it comes down to bad weather, <sighs> Singletary has improved, but I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. But, I mean, you know, it looks like the weather in Orchard Park, they play on this Saturday. So... The weather on Saturday, okay. it looks like there's chance of snow all day. So mm, the wind doesn't look like it's that substantial, though. That's the big thing, honestly, is the wind. So if the Bills can force Mac Jones to pass the ball, they should be able to win fine. And I think that they will. I think the Bills will take take care of business against the Patriots. I, I think the Patriots, like I said, they have a great defense, blah, 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 blah. But last I checked, the Bills didn't even fucking punt against that great defense when they played in New England. And they you know, made Mac Jones throw the ball, and he looked terrible. So <laughs> if they can kind of zero in on Damian Harris and Ramon J. Stevenson, I mean, the Bills have every single game they've won has been by double digit points. And I think it's part of the course, um, you know, in this next matchup against the Patriots. So I, I think that the Bills should be able to take care of business. Um, and, you know, I'm really looking forward to talking about how they perform in the playoffs and, and kind of just giving my thoughts on the playoffs in general, because the 2021 NFL reg- regular season has been crazy. Uh, and I'm really excited for the postseason. But, yeah, uh, pretty good season for the Bills. You know, they won the AFC East again. Um, you know, that's basically I, I didn't they didn't get the one seed in the playoffs but they still won their division and so you know had you told me that the Chiefs got the one seed you know um before in the season but the Bills still won the AFC East yeah maybe they didn't win 12 or 13 games like I had thought but you know they still ended up making the playoffs and still won the AFC East I would be happy and ultimately that's what happened and uh you know there were some low moments in the season for sure but there were also some high moments and you know at the end of the day it was a good season for the buffalo bills i mean how often can you say the bills won the afc east in the 21st century only one other time so i'll take it um and i'm looking forward to this playoff matchup against the patriots because i think third time is the charm they clapped our cheeks the first time we kind of got in there the second time but i think this time It's going to be rough and rowdy. Go Bills.